Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Ace Attorney Trilogy. Uh, I messed with the levels, the audio levels a little bit more, so, um, hopefully it's easier to hear what I'm saying now. Um, I think I didn't quite get them right on the previous episode. Hopefully that's right now. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're doing Rise from the Ashes Day 2 Trial Former. Uh, which is a little bit of a spoiler as to the fact that the trial will have a trial ladder component, if you think about it. Anyway, uh, let's get going. February 23rd, 9.34am, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, there are still- there are- <sighs> Frankly, there are still a lot of grey areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big grey area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is called to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Skye, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there's one decisive difference between you and her. And that is... You're not a defense attorney. I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Time. My first trial without a Fay helping me. No one's gonna bail me out this time. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole way. So he won't really be alone in there because Ema's here and she's adorable and super helpful and cute. So, yeah. <laughs> Look at that baby. Look at her big smile. February 23rd, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number nine. Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Lana Sky. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth. It's been two months, but I haven't been in a courtroom since his trial. I hope the personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. Judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. Your opening statement, please. Chief Prosecutor Lana Sky has committed an unpardonable crime. Unpardonable crime. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow. He's much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. What do you mean, in person? You were there yesterday. Or... Yeah, yesterday. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. There was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. The prosecution calls its first witness, Ms. Angel Star, to the stand. The cough-up queen? What did I do for her voice? Um... <laughs> hmm? Haven't I seen you somewhere? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Oh, caviar. I've never eaten caviar before. The judge is really wolfing it down. Ah, and for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Um, uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? 
hang on, hang on. We can't see her lunchboxes. I need to change something. Is that better? It's too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Yeah, it should be better. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty, it hurts! I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled tapioca taste like? Name. Profession. Now. Me? The name is Angel Star. Don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating. Hurry it up. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call on the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh, huh. What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Ms. Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. What? Miss Starr was a detective? Uh huh. I know who you are. Cough up? Cough up Queen Angel Star, Your Honor. Long time no see. B very well. Y you may continue with the description, Miss Star. Just who is this lady? I might have the court's attention over here. The parking lot at the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor's spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of A block, in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with his knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness, and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. Parking lot floor plans added to the court record. Witness, did you say the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the chief prosecutor. Hmm. Seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright, uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your worst, Miss Star. Wait, are they talking about me? Witnesses account. Somehow, I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend, when I sensed something. Perhaps it was my finely honed detective's intuition at work. Through the, the, through the wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then, she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Hmm. Bringing a lunchbox to your boyfriend? How touching. Hmm. As you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be none, seems to be none other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed into Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I... I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a flesh... merely a flesh... <laughs> It's merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. <laughs> oh, that happened. <laughs> Sorry about that. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Witness's account. 
somehow as soon as I I think I need to I forget exactly what I need to press on here for this to to work. I'll get pressing and see what I can find. How did you know? I respect the prosecutor's basic abhor abhorrence of crime. Yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted. Given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Star, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had found my dream job when I became an investigator. And if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? She was fired. To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. That said, I'm a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. This boyfriend, he's the detective? Not that boyfriend. Security guard. Th that boyfriend? You have several? Come on, Judge, it's 2019. Come on. Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Care to join? The uh, yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I'll stick with the lunches, thanks. Note to self. The judge had to think before replying. The security guard room is in the lot, in A block. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunchboxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. So, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. Yep, it is I'm supposed to be pressing. Um, there might be a contradiction. There's no prints. I mean, she might have cleaned off the prints, you know. Um, one knife wound. Mm. Tell the court why you didn't try to stop this crime. You did see her raise the knife to strike, no? Hmm, the defense has a point. Unfortunately, by the time I realized what was going on, it was already too late. Too late? Yes. The next moment, the chief prosecutor brought down the murder weapon. I... Oh, I see. It's only a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. We can make it. You said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What do we do? Is this it? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that. By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. M Mr. Edgeworth? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's. Wasn't it? Indeed, it was. Hmm, what an odd case this is. And the person you saw, you were sure it was the defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I am certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always nitpick. Witness, in your testimony you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. <laughs> huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. 
I'll fry you like a fritto. Crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. That, that was inspiring. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You could cry plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady. My instincts are honed. A photograph. You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap. I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunch boxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Witness, why well, am I only seeing this photograph just now? I think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor. Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. Crime photo added to the court record. Uh oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? Okay, we do need that photograph. That is quite important. Uh, we can see some stuff in there that's, that's of interest to us. Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd say the blade was about four inches long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, <laughs> yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well versed in the location of a man's vital organs. I'm sure it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg. I mean, a person. Hmm? Perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor? So the defendant was holding a knife. What then? Uh, I know that photograph helps us, but I forget how. Um, hmm. Yeah, we already saw this. I already saw this. Mm. Well, she's not holding a knife in this picture. She's clearly got nothing in her hands. So... The music stopped. And you witnessed this. You saw Ms. Skye stab the victim with the knife? As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Hmm, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. Look at this photograph. This is the photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? And why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Ahem. Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. That had to be the weakest objection ever, Edgeworth. Yet, it was still stronger than your ever-feeble mind, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. Objection! And how can you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stains on the chief prosecutor's coat? But it's a black and white photograph. <laughs> ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, except you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ugh. You got a better idea? Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony. Namely, that she took the picture the moment she witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear. My apologies. Th that's it? 
If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo-sized lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understand it, but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating, like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. P premeditated? How do you know? Look at the Chief Prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Well, are those... gloves? Surgical gloves, made of thin rubber most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh... It was not premeditated, she would not be wearing those gloves. Fuck! These gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder. A serious offence. Witness, add this to your testimony. See, the problem with that is that the murder weapon was the knife found in Edgeworth's car. So, if you were planning a murder, you would probably bring a murder weapon with you. And in this case, they didn't. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case? A bloody murder weapon? A red car? All belonging to the prosecutor there. The defendant is the chief prosecutor for the district, right? Mommy, are prosecutors bad people? The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder, and that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon. Oh. This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon. Ugh. Wog. Order. 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 Great. Now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Wright. My sister's as good as free. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is humble pie. R what? I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. B but this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory. Bah. Prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing the prosecution need prove. Nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If it wasn't, why would she have been wearing... We would like to hear a testimony again. Witness. Please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you? My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now. Angel's deduction. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor held a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I ordered a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Angel's deduction. 
Okay, the problem here is that Detective Goldman was only stabbed once. One knife wound. Not again and again. You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my moss surprise. I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Mr. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! You're right! Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk, he's my hero, really. What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness? You got the crime scene set, right? Uh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realise that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. A red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Okay, we have another problem, because if we look at the photograph she gave us... You can see that Lana's not wearing a muffler. Which is a kind of scarf, by the way. The game doesn't really make that clear, but yeah. It's talking about a red scarf. Uh, which she is wearing, actually, in her profile picture. If you... Well, let me look at it. Whatever. Anyway, uh, she's not wearing it in the photograph, so it doesn't make sense that Angel would have seen it. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. The witness is clearly not suited for detective work. W what? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. And you've proved it yourself. With this photograph. Huh? That, that that can't be. Her only professional lunch lady could be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you've finally found your true calling in life. Hmm. Harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails. What was my objection? Chopped liver? But it was there. A, a scarf. No, not that, but something red. Really? Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a petition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about the scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. Now, it wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous snake bites. Chief Prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. 
Very well, Mr. Wright. A cross-examination, if you will. Apprehending the suspect. <laughs> she mentioned the muffler? What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Just that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else? Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. The phone? She can't mean... By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered at the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately? My memory. It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No, the court doesn't see, Mr. Chief Prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on the wall. Apparently, it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone? Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing, witness. Good witnessing? Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. Things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. Line of self entry in the court record. Okay, so here's a problem, right? Uh, if we have a look at the floor plan, which we have here somewhere. Uh, supposedly, uh, Miss Star was over here in B Block, witnessing through the wire fence. But the emergency phone is behind that big water tank. And it's impossible to see it from this side. You wouldn't be able to see that she's trying to use the phone on the wall. Unless you were witnessing the crime from somewhere else over this side. So we're just gonna object to that. Oi, that was right. How exactly are the evidence and are that evidence in the statement now just now related? They aren't, are they? Not at all. Mr. Wright, please think the facts over for making accusations. I don't think that one meaning points with the judge. So that's the first time I've done the wrong evidence in the Let's Play. That's what happens. <laughs> uh, I don't know why that happened. Maybe I need to give give it the give it show the crime photo instead because in the photo that's that's the um water tank you can see behind her. Hmm. Maybe I try pressing it. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha! I was gonna ask the same thing. Let me say this one time. So listen close, rookie rookies. See, you can see the contradiction right there in the picture. Right? W on the side there, that's Angel. She can't see what, what the prosecutor's doing. Whatever. The chief prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the petition. Then she picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. And during that time you climbed over the chain link fence? Then, when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? Maybe I need to use the photo instead to prove the height of the wall? Let's try the photo. No, that wasn't it. Um, I'm confused. Okay, it's a really obvious contradiction. So where is this petition in the floor plans? 
I'm sure she means this wall next to the car. That's right. There was a wall there, about six feet high. She was obviously trying to hide herself. Quite a natural thing for a criminal to do. And what did you do then? Uh, you say quickly. Were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press it for more details? Actually, yeah, I do want to press for more details. Go back. I found the contradiction. It's weird. I like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. The lunch line car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B block. So we witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30, 30, 30, 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Mr. Star? Y yes, that's right. There was a chain link fence in front of you. I went over it, of course. Amazing. Oh, Queen, lunch lady athlete indeed. It would have taken her a little time to climb over the fence. So she couldn't have gotten my sister that fast. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? Can I present the floor plans yet? Will it let me? Objection. Yes, I had to do all that pressing for to accept the evidence I wanted to... Uh, that was obnoxious. Anyway, Miss Star, I have to conclude that you have a personal grunge... Grunge... <laughs> Grudge against Ms. Lana Sky. <laughs> oh my god. A witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Well, who would have thought you would be on my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You who, together with chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago. Well, Miss Star, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. Hmm. Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true... You couldn't possibly have seen Ms. Sky making that phone call. I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the back side of this petition. If indeed you were in B-Block, you couldn't have seen it. Wah! Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not copping up lunch. She's copping up lies! Urgh. That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly wh what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about... Miss Sky tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Star to lie about it. Pointless to lie. I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Sky using the emergency phone. It would mean Miss Star witnessed the crime from a different location. Objection. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Objection. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. <laughs> let me ask a question about clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Miss Star witnessed the crime was here. So up here in the security room, because she was visiting her boyfriend in the security room. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm, 
she would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honour. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the petition is here. I remember in your testimony you said, you brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, mister? How many years have I been getting the better of men to think that the tables could be turned? Today, a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective, you should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty, the guilty. Is she talking about Miss Sky? Um, Mr. Wright, doesn't this strike you as odd? Why did Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the crime from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. That truth still stands. Objection! It still stands? I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. So tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Huh? M me Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Star witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? The answer is the distance to the crime, oddly enough. If you look at the, the floor plans, it's about the same amount of distance from B, from B Block to the car as from the security room to the car, but the actual travel distance from... because you can't just jump out of the security booth on the second floor is much greater. It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. I don't see how that would change what she could see. What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Star, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Skye? Well, witness? You... Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to an edible. I was bringing a PB&J lunch with fresh boysenberry jam to my boyfriend. Hmm, boysenberry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass-walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the scene. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. That's why I had to go through the visitors' parking in B Block. That's quite a detour. It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. F five minutes? Hmm, this changes things considerably. But it was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Uh-oh. Mr. Wright, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? Objection! 
five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time. If you like it al dente. I've got lunch boxes that tie pasta into knots, Rocky. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey! D don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run. But this time was different. Miss Guy dawdled the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yarg. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. That was too close. I'm afraid that the cop-up queen has been dethroned. And with that, court is adjourned. Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid, reel, squid wheels, right? That's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer to not take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of her trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Star. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo! A triple decker! Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. <laughs> Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the lunchline motto says, you won't be disappointed. I'm actually going to pull out of her lunchbox this time. Decisive evidence. I should have mentioned those five minutes when I wasn't looking at the crime scene. And now, it's the matter of the victim's shoe. Did I not bring this up? Two types of blood were found on this shoe. One was, of course, the victim's. And the other blood type matched that of the defendant, Ms. Lana Skye. This shoe proves it. It's flawless, decisive evidence. What? There was blood found on that shoe? Try Lunchland for all your lunch and decisive evidence needs. Objection. Witness, what's the meaning of this? Why is this the first time I've heard of this evidence? Simple, as we've already said. I don't trust you with evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. That's why I took the liberty of investigating this myself. And you had blood tests performed? Didn't I mention? I have three boyfriends in forensics. In any case, Your Honor, I can't accept this as evidence. What? You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence should be shown without the approval of the police department. In other words, this shoe is illegal evidence, at least for the time being. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. Edgeworth sure is celebrating. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Don't forget, I used to be a detective. As I mentioned previously, this shoe has already been tested by a member of the forensics department. As you can see, it was approved by the police department as of today. Even the general public can produce official evidence, Mr. Edgeworth. Is that right, Mr. Wright? Seems so. Edgeworth is looking pretty sullen. You could at least study some evidence law. Really? Prosecution's complaints notwithstanding, it appears that this evidence satisfies the first rule of evidence law. However, it seems you have yet another count against you, witness. Anything to ensure the guilty are properly judged. Victim shoe out of the court record. 
Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. Have a look at this shoe we just got. Alright, so it's a shoe. It's got some blood on it. It's got some more blood on it. Some blood on the top. Some blood on the bottom. Ah, there's blood here too! And the sole of the shoe? It's gotta be the victim's. He must have stepped in a puddle of his own blood. All this blood. It's horrible. Hmm. This blood might be an important clue. It is, that's why I looked at the shooter then. Um. Can't this evidence go through without a fight? You ordered the peppered fish guts, right? Some like it hot, Mr. Wright. Some, like your client, cheated enough hot water to make a whole bat of soup. Mr. Wright, do you or don't you have a problem with the shoe? A problem? This is critical. Is there a problem with the victim's shoe? If I'm not imagining things, I'd say there is one critical problem with this evidence. A clear contradiction. That gleam in your eyes. You're still young, rookie. I'll give you- I'd give you a peppered fish gut now. But you couldn't take the heat, could you? Let's see what Mr. Wright has to say. What is contradictory about the victim's shoe? Show us the problem with this evidence. It is in fact the blood on the bottom of the shoe. That's the problem. I wonder if you noticed. There's blood on the bottom of this shoe. Don't mess with me, rookie. Or it'll be your blood on the bottom of my shoe. Hmm. Indeed, there is quite a bit of blood on the bottom of this shoe. It makes sense. The victim was stabbed with a knife. What could possibly be contradictory about blood on the bottom of his shoe? Well, if we look at this photograph, there's no blood on the ground. It's very clean. The problem lies in... lies... The problem lies in the footprint. The footprint? Note that the bottom of the victim's shoe is covered in blood. Then, isn't it strange? Why weren't any bloody footprints found by the scene of the crime? Aha! As you can see, there were no traces of any such, such footprints at the scene of the crime. That contradicts your claim about this shoe. This picture only shows part of the floor, so there could have been bloody footprints. Then where are they, Mr. Edgeworth? Because we checked the scene and found nothing of the sort. Order, order, order. Well, witness? What? Huh? I, uh... Great going, Mr. Wright, but... It's true that the lack of a footprint is a contradiction, but then we have to ask why there wasn't a footprint. Oh. That's true. That's to be a reason why there wasn't a footprint. Think, Mr. Wright, think. Hey, I don't know why it's not there. I'm just good at finding contradictions. What? I see. Now I get it. Get what? Our witness is more devious than I gave her credit for. We were hoodwinked to the very end. But she slipped. There's one vital hint to the truth in her testimony. What are you talking about? Think back to what she told us about apprehending the suspect. Oh hey, the flashback's actually in black and white like it's supposed to be. That's interesting. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. Rawr. I thought that was a strange thing for the normally cool-headed chief to do. No kidding. Now, witness, allow me to ask a very simple question. This oil drum. Was it empty? Oh, that, hmm? I'm not sure I like your attitude, Mr. Edgeworth. Though apparently you're not the slowest conveyor belt in the lunchbox factory. 
Witness. Well, was the oil drum empty? The oil drum kicked over by the chief prosecutor was brimming with water. W water? What does that mean? Still don't get it, Mr. Wright? Do you want to know the reason she knocked it over? The real reason? Aha! Uh -huh. You don't mean... Yes, the suspect knocked over that oil drum for one reason, and one reason alone. To erase the bloodstain that would become evidence against her. Wow. That ties things up quite nicely. The bloodstains left from the victim's shoe tie her quite clearly to this murder. Then after the deed was done, she knocked over the oil drum to erase the telltale signs. Why, that's a prosecutor's specialty. Erasing evidence. That reminds me. Miss Sky's right hand was hurt. Didn't she say she cut herself when she stabbed him? So that's when... My sister's blood got on the shoe? Well, I've seen a reason to prolong this trial. Mr. Wright, do something, please. What? What can I do? My sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But, uh... Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star was on the prosecution's side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant, Miss Lana Skye. Little girl, what did you just say? Huh? M me? Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution's side? Well, yeah, you are. You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints. Well. I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox. A lunchbox called Evidence. Wait, witness, don't tell me you have something else. The time for deliberations has passed. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your threats don't scare the cough-up queen. Look at this! Photograph? I had it just in case anyone had the gall to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! Hey, it's clearly wet! Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I... I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case from the beginning. And it seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right, wet or not, don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Get yourself up off the asphalt, take another good look. Don't give up, not till a bitter end. This is the last piece of evidence. Very well, this time I'd like to declare a verdict for good. Your Honor, wait. What is it with you people? Can't I handle my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it wait? No, it can't. Then it would be too late. Look at this photograph, the last one submitted. This trial isn't over until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah. I'll think later. Yeah, there's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. The problem, it turns out, is what the heck's going on with this car? That shouldn't be in there. 
problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. Your Honor, you just said muffler. However, I see no trace of a muffler or a scarf of any kind in this photograph. The muffler is also a part of a car or a part on a car. Blah, blah, blah. A part on a car or a motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. A pipe. Uh, is it called a muffler, like, in America? Like, here we just call it the exhaust. Or the exhaust pipe or something. We don't, we don't call it a muffler. I see. And I see. What's that suspicious-looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm. So what if there's something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Objection! Sorry, Miss Star, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. What? Let's see what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler has led to this case. Well, Lana had a phone call where she said the word muffler, so I feel like that's probably important. Ms. Starr, recall your testimony for the court. Oh yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler? Ugh! Yarg. Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh, Yarg. Well, it seems we'll have to suspend the proceedings. Suspend? I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene inspected at once and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Whew. That was close. But we made it. At least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? <laughs> it says judge, it doesn't say Phoenix. <laughs> it's supposed to be Phoenix. We didn't change the text at the top. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, uh, that's the end of that segment. And this is a long video, so I'm glad we got to the end of it. Wow. Uh, I'm gonna save. Uh, and then next time we'll do the rest of the trial. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.